kind of nice doing the video yesterday. I mentioned that I hadn't done one in a while. I was kind of preoccupied with, you know, with all the not dying stuff. But uh, I don't know, it feels good to kind of talk about things. So I thought maybe I'd, I'd start doing this again. Uh, I don't want to blab on and on about the moon, though. You know, that is what it is. Um, I figured uh, what's really on my mind today in terms of nuts and bolts of that, all that, you know, not dying stuff is... Um, you know, staying warm, staying warm and, you know, keeping enough calories in your body to keep going. Uh, yesterday was pretty brisk out. Today, uh, we had a bunch of rain last night. In fact, you can see, I mean, there's pretty much nothing left for snow on top of the, the shelter. Uh, and it's feeling really comfortable uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, the way spring is here in New England, you know, you can have warm days and cool days and back to, I mean, who knows, it could be like 20 degrees tomorrow. Um, so I'm still thinking about keeping warm, but it's nice to know that spring is kind of coming on its way. Uh, what I've been doing to keep warm uh, is, uh, you know, just all old Yankee New England tricks for staying warm in the winter. Uh, you know, if you're camping outside and it's cold out, you know, it's always going to be a challenge. And uh, what I've been doing is layering. Uh, I've got a lot of layers on. Uh, you know, it looks like I'm wearing kind of a, a coat and some pants, but, you know, this coat is one layer. I can do this because it's warm now. This coat is one layer over this, uh, this sweatshirt that I, I came into. Uh, and under the sweatshirt is another t-shirt. Uh, I think I picked this one up at some of the, uh, the houses over here. And then under this is uh, actually, well this is a shirt off my back <laughs> that I left my house in. Uh, the pants also are, the, you know, the pants on my legs that I, I wore uh, out of the house. If I knew when I was fleeing my house, when I was doing it, that uh, I was going to have to be wearing what I was wearing at that time for an extended period of time in the winter, I might have chosen something other than blue jeans. Uh, blue jeans are one of the worst things that you can wear out in cold weather. They get wet. As soon as they get wet, you start feeling the cold right through them. I mean, they've, they're what I've got, so I'm wearing them, but uh, you know, even with these, I've got layers underneath these guys. I've got uh, a layer of uh, uh, sweatpants. Again, I picked these up from some of the, the suburbs over there. I've got some socks that my uh, sweatpants are uh, tucked into. Inside these socks is another layer of socks in these. It's good to keep rotating your socks. You don't want to get damp, cold feet, so, so that's important. Uh, but really, uh, keeping layers on is a great way of, uh, you know, taking clothes. Well, these are t-shirts, um, but, you know, it's, you know, it's warmer today, but it's still kind of cool. But having these t-shirts on, having two layers of them, you know, just having the layers of summer clothes can make you a lot more comfortable, even though these aren't designed for winter weather. Having this plus, you know, heck, this sweatshirt, this isn't, like, necessarily a cold or winter kind of thing, but having all these layers on together keeps you nice and warm because you have all those layers. The most challenging time, though, honestly, is not daytime, it's nighttime. The, the temperatures really dip when you're camping outside in the middle of the night, and uh, that's the time you really have to be careful. Now, the shelter that I built here, there is a small wood stove that I built in there, and that really felt great. I mean, that brought heat into the space. Uh, the rocks around the wood stove, you know, heated up while I was running it, and that has been a great asset, especially just when you're working outside, you get your hands in the snow, and, uh, you know, it's cold, so it's nice to have an actual fire, you know, you can uh, warm up next to. But, you know, that in and of itself, I didn't think was going to be sufficient, so I used some other techniques. One of them was actually using some of these juice bottles. Uh, I found that if I filled these juice bottles with uh, really hot water, uh, you know, not boiling water because, you know, the plastic of these bottles starts deforming when you put boiling water in it, but if I put some really hot water in these guys and then bundled up in there and had these kind of right up against me, uh, that was really helpful to try to take all the heat energy that I could take right off of a fire and put it inside my, my clothes. I found out on the first night, though, that you really got to make sure that they're held this way and not this way, because especially once you put hot water into these things, these seals aren't good for anything. So I found out really quickly, you got to make sure that these things stay vertical, otherwise you get wet, and then that's a disaster, because you get, well, it wasn't a disaster, but it was really uncomfortable. Uh, you get wet, and it's cold, and that's a problem. Uh, so if you're uh, going to do something like this, you have to make sure that you're keeping them vertical, uh, and you know, making sure that they're not leaking on you. But these were really, really great. A lot of heat energy can be packed into the water in a bottle like that, and that's great. 
Um, the way to keep that uh, heat in your body, though, again, is to keep you dry while you're uh, in a, a winter camping environment and to keep you warm with more layers. So, you know, the same way that I'm trying to keep myself dry on my body and uh, warm on my body, I'm using the same technique when I'm in there. And it starts from the ground. Uh, and when you lay on the ground, uh, there's always uh, kind of moisture just venting up from the ground. The ground is a moist environment and whether it's coming up as an actual puddle, like in this, you know, sometimes there'd be a little water that would run in, or even just the humidity of the ground, you want to have some kind of a vapor barrier. And there's a bunch of different things that I've used to do that, um, and they've gotten better and better as I've been doing my runs in here. I started off with just things like trash bags. Uh, you know, and trash bags are okay, but they're really thin. Uh, but I would use some trash bags, lay them down, and that created a really nice vapor barrier on the ground in here. Um, uh, after the trash bags, I graduated to some of these old, ripped up, it's like, uh, I don't know, like landscaping plastic and stuff. This was a, a lot tougher, um, but still it would get some holes in it. Um, but, you know, I would just layer all this stuff onto, you know, more layers of this stuff. And the great thing is the more of these plastic layers you're putting in, you're getting little air uh, cavities trapped between them and you're creating a little bit of insulation as well. Uh, the coup de gras, is that it? Coup de gras or coup d'etat? I don't remember. I could look it up on my, my phone, but I, <laughs> I don't have it and it's not working. Um, well, the, uh, the final blow, as the French would say, was this beautiful garish uh, shower curtain, again, on one of my runs. It's like a six or an eight mil vinyl, and this has been really great. I just laid this down in there, and this, uh, like, there's no water uh, just bubbling up through this thing. This was a really great find, and I'm glad that I found that. And it really, it spruces up the place, brings a little color uh, into the interior. Um, so that stuff was really great as a vapor barrier in there, so that when I'm laying down, I don't end up lying down in a puddle and my back doesn't get all damp. Because, you know, if you're out and you sit down on the grass or something like that, you know, you don't even notice it, but then you get up and your butt's wet. So that, that kind of moisture can wick up slowly, and it can become a real problem. Uh, the next layer that I used was uh, some kind of an insulating layer. Now, oh god, if I could have found some like yoga mats or something like that in there, I'm still looking for yoga mats. That'd be pretty awesome. But what I have found is all these plastic mail mailers that people would get like Amazon stuff or whatever in. Uh, you know, they're trash, but they're gold at this point. I've got tons of these in there and I just took these and you know put down my vapor barrier and then just scattered these over it in a nice uh, layered pile. Now these are an additional vapor barrier because they're plastic. Uh, on top of that, they are padding because you know it's squishy bubble pack here, uh, really comfortable. And uh, the third benefit that they have is insulation because you've got all these trapped air spaces in there. So you put this up against a co cool ground. Uh, oh man, it's like I said, this stuff. This stuff here is gold. On top of that, I would just uh, put uh, some blankets. I did get some blankets. Also some, well, I got one right here. Uh, just some towels. You know, uh, towels seem like, you know, not the kind of thing you're going to go, you know, wrapping yourself up in, in bed with. But, you know, you have a, a few of these. In fact, these were some of my first finds. You have a few of these, and they become shawls. And it makes a huge difference just having these extra layers on. So, on top of the vapor barrier, I would put the foam padding. And then myself, all layered up, having this hot water bottle in there with me and kind of bundling blankets and eventually, uh, I'm sorry, towels and eventually I did find some blankets uh, in there. And then what I would do, because uh, this structure itself did occasionally have some little drips and things, I took one of my tarps and I would kind of throw a tarp over, over the whole thing just to, if I did have some drips coming down on, them, on me, they wouldn't be absorbing right into my warming layers. They would be being absorbed uh, or, you know, shed off by the uh, the tarp. So that's what I've been doing, and it's, you know, it's worked out okay. You camp outside in the winter, and it's, it's uncomfortable. I mean, there's no way around that. It's going to be uncomfortable, but you do the best with it you, that you can, and if you keep yourself covered in layers, have some kind of like a heat source that you can bring in with you, hot water. People talk about heating up stones. You can heat up stones by the fire, but you start putting stones around the fire, and if they've got water in them, they can quickly turn into hand grenades, because uh, especially like river stones, you, you take a river stone or put it in the uh, in or near the fire, the water that's on the inside of that stone is going to boil and then the thing can explode and I didn't want to mess with that. So just having the hot water uh, was a really nice asset. So I feel like we've gotten through the worst of the winter here and uh, you know I'm looking forward to you know this next season being spring and uh, there's definitely some improvements I want to make. I, I don't know how long all this is going to go, but I'd rather plan for it being longer than I would like, than, you know, hope that it's going to be really short and not, you know, 
plan ahead enough and you know be in trouble later on. So I'm planning as though this could, who knows how long this is going to go on for. So uh, this season I want to do some upgrades to this uh, structure to make it even more livable. Um, uh, certainly with water shedding, I did, I did put some uh, plastic bag layers uh, underneath some of these uh, you know, pine boughs, but I want to maybe do something that has more of that water shedding, because like I said, I was getting some dripping happening on the inside. Um, and I also want to get a more reliable food source. Uh, I've been fairly... Food has come into my lap fairly serendipitously for the entire uh, experience since I've been out here, and I don't like relying on serendipity to keep me alive. Uh, you know, the pickings in town are getting slimmer and slimmer. I'm trying not to go in there. Uh, in the spring, there is going to be more wild edible stuff here. I'm hoping there's going to be more game so that I can find, you know, some animals uh, to, to go after. My uh, supplies are starting to get, you know, I still, I'm, I'm still doing okay, but, you know, every day there's a little bit less. So another thing I'd like to try, uh, based on another score that I had in town here, is that I'm going to be doing some gardening. Um, there is a field just down over here, and there's a stream kind of right next to it. So I want to take some of the nice earth from the forest, uh, bring it down over there into the field. The field didn't look like it was the best soil. And I'd like to start growing some crops based on some seeds that I scored in town over there. Uh, there were pumpkins. Um, what else was there? I forget. I just, I just grabbed, like, there was a big pile of seed packs, and I was just like, okay, I'm in. I'll, I'll grab those. And I've been trying to keep those dry for the entire winter. If circumstances were anything different than what they are, I'd probably actually be fairly enthusiastic and excited about some of the projects. Now, I guess I am looking forward to them because they're going to increase my quality of life and my uh, survivability uh, in a lot of cases. And, like, how much do you even really want to think about that? Like, preparing this for next winter. I mean, who wants to think that this is going to go on for that long? But who knows? And I'd rather personally be overprepared and put in more work than I had to, but, you know, take that as insurance versus not being prepared enough. And, well, I was almost in that situation over this last winter, and it was just, just because of trash that I was able to survive. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.